please go ahead. Feel free. Okay. So, hello, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everybody who is now here to listen to us. Uh, I hope you will benefit from this session that I'm going to give with my dear friends next time Friday. Uh, but uh, I won't turn my little camera on because of the poor simple quality. Whenever I turn it on, I have a problem. But you will be seeing a smile picture of mine. Uh, and I, I hope it works, considering what we heard from uh, Monique and Don. Now I'm going to talk about the design of and the structure of the course and some important details. And next time Friday we'll be sharing the experiences with you. Uh, if you want to ask a question or make a comment, can you please make a note of it so that we can focus on, on your questions at the end of the session? Hopefully, we will have enough time to go over your questions. Right. Uh, our can started. you hear me? Yes. yes. We can hear you. Mm -hmm. Any problems here? I am. Uh, no. Can you uh, hear no me? Problem. Okay. So, I think Ian is trying to test his system. So, I'm going to uh, turn off the audio. All right. Just please continue now. All right. Now, uh, our journey started after we saw this poster and Harleen gave us information about what it was going to be like. Uh, although I had taken part in a similar project years before, uh, it attracted my attention because it had the technology element in its design. So I decided to take part in it once again. Uh, now, let me introduce the team, uh, our course tutor was Haldun, and here's the list of the participant instructors. We have Kunda, Jamie, Kumar, Brat, Darish, Max, Friday, and I myself. So we had a very strong team. And the course started in September in 2019 and we finished in January this year. In other words, uh, this project uh, we conducted uh, was during the first and the second modules of this academic year. So, we're talking about a project that was designed to last for two modules and it was bound to be very comprehensive in many aspects. So we can see various contributions of the course, uh, which are fostering the process of technology integration, improving teachers' digital skills both for reflection and for teaching. There are three dimensions here. And also enriching reflection and feedback with evidence-based multimodality. Now let's take a look at the course objectives. We have two sets of objectives. The first one being technology enhanced reflection objectives, and the second set is objectives of technology integration in an ELT class. I'm not going to go over these in detail because we can try to focus more on these later. And here is the second set. Uh, here are the expectations, of course, for us to be able to achieve all these things, do these things properly. Uh, there were some expectations, and you can see these, these expectations. A very comprehensive course, so lots of things to do, lots of deadlines to meet, and we had to be very careful with what we were expected to do and the deadlines because we're talking about a multi-dimensional project here. I mean, uh, 
there was the tutor dimension and the peer dimension and uh, so for smooth flow of the process we had to make use of technology in a very effective way to re realize all this we created a course on blackboards which made our lives easier because uh, we have been familiar with many features of using blackboards okay. here you can see on the left many folders including all the information we needed throughout the project Here, you can see the course program as an example. So we knew what to do and when to do it. Or here, we can see the context, the content of the, of the training. In short, this Blackboard course made it possible for, for, for Haldun, for us, the instructors, uh, to be aware of all the expectations and the procedures, and also by using this platform, we fulfill the expectations easily. And, of course, uh, we're talking about self-reflection, we're talking about blackboard, so we had to record lessons on Anopto. We recorded four lessons in total, and after each of these lessons, we completed uh, some reports. What were those reports? We talked about the self-reflection report. And after each lesson, that specific lesson was watched on Blackboard by a peer, and he wrote a report on the lesson. And also, Haldun wrote a very detailed report and shared his feedback with us on Blackboard. Now here, I want to show you uh, the reflection template with two sets of questions. Again, you can see how comprehensive it was. This is the second set. And here is a, is a sample of tutors feedback on the lesson with evidence on Blackboard. Here you can see a snapshot from, the, from one of the recorded lessons. Very detailed. I would also like to talk about a very important tool here. Uh, on Panopto, we can give minute by minute feedback to a peer, uh, or you can respond to your peer's feedback. To do this, you don't have to watch the whole video recording, but a specific moment can be chosen, and you can you can write a comment on it. You can you can see your peer's comment here. It was really helpful, and we, we learned a lot from, from this feature. And another feature we used was the online discussion forums. Uh, from time to time, Harding gave us a discussion topic, and we shared our ideas uh, on it. We having to come together in a real classroom environment uh, without having to arrange a certain place or a time. It was really practical. And here is an example. Now, my friend Friday is going to continue. Over to you, Friday. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Aigun, for the outlining of the course. And um, thank you to everybody for joining us, for making the time to join us. So, uh, just to carry on from where uh, my colleague Aigun just finished. Um, I will talk about my experiences in the course, um, the process of the course, and also why this uh, professional development in ed edtech is uh, beneficial and has some advantages over um, over face-to-face -face observation, as well as um, learning how to use some other technological um, tools in classes. So. Now, prior to starting this professional development, I had some questions about my teaching in the classroom. And some of the things that I, uh, I was asking myself were these. Uh, I was not very confident in using technology in the, in the lessons. 
And also I was looking for means and ways to integrate new technology into my lessons in a more meaningful way. And, and apart from that, also I was asking myself, how can I improve and develop my teaching strategy effectively? Okay. So, and then on top of that, I mean, prior to these professional development projects, we were all required to have at least two lessons observed by the uh, uh, TEU during the academic year. So this is what got me interested in doing this project because I had this question and also there were these requirements that I had to do. So uh, doing this project helped me to actually uh, achieve some of these um, questions that I had for myself. So, but how did we do this? So, uh, I joined this course because the purpose was actually to provide a comprehensive, evidence-based, automodial and uh, reflective point of view towards technology integration in an LT classroom setting. So I thought this was quite beneficial for us. Okay, so uh, what did we learn during this um, project? So like my colleague Aydun uh, said before, uh, we had two things that we had to talk about. The first one was uh, we had to do. The first one was how we could integrate technology into the ELT class. So we had some sessions for this, and also we had uh, other training sessions how we can actually do um, electronic reflection. So the first session actually we looked at uh, how we can use Blackboard, Smartboard in our classroom. We were also I expose and give resources when it comes to classroom management tools and also we are trained on how students can use wikis and other instructional technologies so an example i will show you is we had a resource page on blackboard which is still there and this resource page had all the assistive technologies instructional technologies that we can integrate into our lessons so for example i learned how to use uh, menti I went. I learned also how to use uh, Padlet. I learned how to use Quizlet and Quizzes. So many things uh, that we could use uh, in the lessons. But what was more important um, was how these were actually meaningful or beneficial when it comes to addressing the students' learning needs. Okay. So, uh, but for us to, to be able to do this, we had to go through this process. Uh, the first part, I has already, I uh, think, uh, talked about. Uh, the process of the how it went on. So we had a total of four lessons that we had to observe. And for each lesson, we had to do a self-reflection, meaning we have to look at your teaching and everything else. I'll talk about that shortly. And then there was also peer reflection, where a colleague uh, who was participating in the course has to watch a video and also observe and make comments. But this was done on a given template. And then also each lesson, each reflection, um, had its specific focus and targets, and we're looking at the lesson objectives, the materials used in this lesson, and how were the students engaged, what, what materials worked and what didn't work, as well as classroom management and uh, teaching approaches. We'll come back to this later, we we'll must explain this. But for now, I wanted to talk about uh, self-reflection. So there is a poll for us here. We have a question, mm -hmm. and I would like for you to answer this poll in all honesty, yeah. answer the questions honestly, please. All right, I'll give you a minute because we need to get some responses from as many people as possible. So somebody doesn't do any reflection at all. Right. So um, I don't know if the other 14 people are still there, uh, but at least we have more than 50% of the participants here saying they actually do uh, reflect on their lessons or specific lessons, which is uh, quite a good thing. But I have another question. So if you do reflect on your lessons, then um, do you think self-reflection is important? Do you think self-reflection is important? Uh, this should be a poll coming up soon. There we go, yes.
right, there we go. So again, we see uh, more than 50% uh, actually uh, agreeing that self-reflection is very important. Okay, so now, uh, okay, yeah, most people agree that self-reflection is very important. So now, um, what I would like to talk about is, uh, when we did our self-reflection, we had this template that we had to follow, and this template had the questions and answers that we had to follow. So the first one was about reflection on, the first one was about the reflection on um, how we integrate the technology into the lessons. This looking at uh, instruction objectives of technology, what was the learning objective, as well as technology required to achieve these objectives. But when you show this, the technology you choose, there must be a rationale, there must be a reason why you choose this technology. And you need to think about uh, the usefulness of this technology and how easy, easy it is for the student to access it. And then the last part, we still come back to what says how we achieve the objective using this technology. So that's why we say uh, it's not about just choosing the technology for the sake of using it, but it must be useful in achieving the student's learning needs. Okay. Now, so our expectations when it comes to self-reflection, I mean, um, it, this might mean different things to different people. Maybe to you as well, it might mean different things. To me, it might mean different uh, thing when we talk about self-reflection. But what I would like to use as an example of an image we see when we look into the mirror. Obviously, we look at the image of ourselves, and no matter how handsome you look or how beautiful you look, at the end of the day, you still want to look at positive aspects of yourself or your image. So, um, I, I use this example here. When you look in the mirror, obviously you just want to look at the positive parts of uh, how handsome you look or how beautiful you look. You never really look at the negative aspects of self. But this self-reflection, what taught you, what it taught me is actually you need to be very self-critical of your own teaching. It's not just about looking at the things that work in the lessons, but you can also have to consider the things that didn't work and how you can work on these things to make them better in other lessons or how else can you have done this in a better way, okay? So this is one thing that I took away from this self-reflecting. It's quite very important, right? So uh, the next part, I'll hand over to my friend, Max, uh, who's going to talk now about the value of self-reflection. Max, are you there? I am, thanks, Saigun, and thanks, okay. Friday. Oh, thank, you. Yeah. thank you very much. So guys, um, yeah, um, so I remember back in September, last September, when, when uh, Aldrin asked me if I wanted to be involved, and uh, I responded uh, enthusiastically. I said, yes, of course, I want to do the course. But after starting the course, the first thing I said was, uh, oh, wow, why did I just do that? So I kept asking myself this question, and, and also Friday, my friend, was asking himself the same question because we both felt a bit overwhelmed by the workload this task of uh, self-reflection required. Watching videos, giving and receiving feedback, trying to justify why a lesson was not as good as it was supposed to be, you name it, okay? But I've come to the conclusion that, that self-reflection is, is a simple way to look inside your mind and, and find out why you are doing something in a certain way, okay? So we as teachers, in, in our challenging profession, we know that self-reflection offers us a, a chance to think about what works and what doesn't work in the classroom. And as a result, we teachers can use reflective teaching as a way to analyze and evaluate our own way of teaching so we can focus mainly on what works in the end. Okay, so um, then um, why why is reflection important? Okay, so uh, two things here. Um, so um, I think effective teachers are the first to admit that no matter how good a lesson is, our teaching strategies can always be improved. I think we all agree. And this is why sometimes we want uh, our colleagues' opinions. Um, so self-reflection is important because it's, it's, it's a process that makes you collect, record, and analyze everything that happened in the lesson so that next time you can make improvements in your teaching strategies, okay? When, when necessary, obviously, okay? Um, okay, so, and next is the process of uh, reflection. 
okay so um in so the first step is to understand to figure out what you want to reflect upon okay so here i came up with with two things um so one is a particular feature of your teaching okay and the other one is a response to a specific problem that you might have in the classroom so whether it's one or the other the main thing is to start collecting information now how do you do that you can do that in many different ways but in our course with Haldun we use video recording okay now everybody knows what this is so um, a video recording is valuable because it provides a vantage point for how effective your lesson may be uh, from both a teacher and student perspective. Um, additionally, a video may also act as an additional set of eyes to catch all the little things or behavior that you hadn't spotted at the time. And this is why today, not just us um, um, at Economy, uh, but also I think other institutions adopt this method to teach uh, teachers the value of self-reflection, okay? The other point is peer observation through Panopto. So as Aigun and Friday explained, um, this was done in different stages. But as you know, in the past, um, people would just invite a colleague to come into your classroom and observe your teaching. Now, this is much different from having someone come in and watch you. Uh, again, recording is, is uh, a lot more casual and there are no eyes fixed on you. As a result, you'll be able to teach more naturally and give your colleagues a more honest perspective of your instruction methods. So as my, my dear colleague explained, so in the course, the teacher and the tutor, Haldun, and one different peer for each lesson had to observe the lesson and then fill out a questionnaire report. Also afterwards, if you wanted, uh, we would make some times to sit down with them so that they could more accurately convey what they saw or just read the comments on Blackboard, okay? So it gives you an opportunity to sort of um, talk and and have a, you know, discuss the things that went well and the things that maybe didn't go so well, okay? So now in the next slide, so this is the template for, set, for peer reflection, okay, with the questions, okay? Um, another feature, of the course was a minute by minute discussion, which uh, I found very useful. Again, thank you, Haldun, for that. Um, this is a, that's the snapshot. Now, I don't know if you can see the slide, but in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little box where you can actually comment minute by minute. Okay, um, good. And this right, is the yeah. template for trainers reflection, okay, with, you know, different questions, okay. Um, and basically, this is, that's the layout of the course. That's how it was organized. Friday, um, anything right. else you want to add? Sure. Thank you very much, um, uh, much Max. So, um, yeah, as Max has just said, the, the main advantage of doing this course was actually being able to go back on the recorded videos and also um, look at what your friends are, are doing in the classroom and then make some comments uh, if you have any uh, questions about anything. But what was more important was uh, the trainer's uh, reflection. So um, Hardun, of course, was our trainer, and this man is very, very um, serious with what he's doing. He never misses a thing. So for each lesson, he had to write um, a reflection about it. And it was very insightful and helpful. And this is how it felt like when Adam was looking at your lessons. He would analyze everything. He won't miss anything. And from the beginning, every second of your lesson, what you're supposed to do and the things you can do better, which I found to be very, very helpful uh, in my teaching right now. OK, so uh, but all in all, this is this is how the reflection was. So um, Adam's reflection was very insightful and positive encouraging encouraging to learn and adopt how to integrate new technology in the classroom and it was very detailed and included uh, constructive suggestions on how i can do better in my teaching projects okay right so funda is asking why the camera is off because we are talking about this for now right so uh, the the next part was the advantages of uh, e reflection so 
one thing that we all agreed on is that we don't have to go through the steps of conventional classroom observations, uh, which pose several difficulties, like finding a common time for the observation as well as the feedback. Another advantage was that, I mean, um, it, it makes actually uh, it easy for a teacher to welcome the idea of, of uh, observation and promises more quality feedback. So in addition to that, it also provides a unique method of uh, expanding our knowledge and skills in integrating new technologies um, in in this course, uh, in our classes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now, Max, can you just tell us more about your other experiences in this course? Of course, uh, Friday, as you've, uh, have you, you have explained, so Haldun was really amazing, always willing to encourage us and try new things. Um, but obviously, when you do this course, then you, you you ask yourself a lot of questions, okay? So, like, we, we Friday and, and Igun and myself came up with, um, you know, um, a set of questions, okay? So, before self-reflection, um, for example, what are the objectives, okay? So, um, was the lesson too easy or too difficult for the students? Did the students understand what was being taught and what kind of what kind of problems arose? And then uh, here again, materials. Uh, again, I want to thank you, Haldun, for that because I had no idea. I mean, there's a wide range of materials that you can use, but I'm not really into that. But thanks to Haldun, Haldun came up with all sorts of different things, and that allowed us to use different materials. So um, and after that we came up this, with these questions. So did the materials keep the students engaged in the lesson? Um, did they work in the lesson? What materials did we use that didn't work in the lesson? Because there's that as well. And then are there any resources or techniques that you would like to see used instead? So, um, so this was one very important aspect of the teaching. Uh, and then students, obviously students, questions about the students, um, uh, where the students on task and then Two and three, I think, are very important. So what parts of the lesson did the students seem most engaged with? And then the opposite, what parts of the lesson did the students seem least engaged with? And how we could work to deal with those issues? Um, and then, again, some more questions. Obviously, classroom management. Um, this is the one question that I think every teacher asks themselves. Were my instructions clear? was the lesson taught at a reasonable pace. As you know, guys, uh, we plan every lesson. So one of the main issue here is that are we going too fast or are we going too slow? Uh, are we going to miss, you know, parts of the teaching? Uh, and also, finally, did all the students participate in the lesson, which is uh, especially these days uh, in uh, with the online teaching, that's one of the main issues that um, that is discussed all the time uh, and finally about the teachers so how effective was the overall lesson how can i do better next time did i meet all the objectives how did i deal with any problems that came up during instructions okay also very important um, was i perceptive and sensitive to each of my students needs and then finally how was my overall attitude and delivery throughout the class. So again, lots of questions, which I think are all useful, okay, for, for our colleagues. And then finally, um, this is the very last thing that I uh, came up with, uh, just a, a, a brief, um, just to, to wrap it all up. So analyze and implement effective techniques. Now, once you collect all the information, it's time to analyze it. Um, now, the one thing that I really paid attention to was recurring patterns, okay? So when I watched the recorded lesson, mine or my colleagues, did I find anything that kept happening over and over? So I think this is one question that all the teachers ask themselves because these things can be corrected, you know? Or obviously, if you think that these things are good, then you can keep doing them, okay? Uh, in terms of, say, the wording, the instructions, the, even the body language. Sometimes you look at yourself, you watch yourself uh, on camera and you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't be moving my hands so much. Uh, so stuff like that. And uh, so finally, once you've figured out what needs to be changed, then that's the, the easy part is just finding a solution. 
Um, and you can do that also by talking to your colleagues about your findings and ask them for advice, which we did with Friday and Argun. Okay, so talking to, to one another is always um, a, a nice way to, you know, uh, improve your, your teaching methods. And, well, this is it, basically. Friday and Argun right. anything else? Okay. Now, uh, just after my uh, PD, uh, this, uh, these are the things that I acquired from uh, attending this project. So um, I'm now able to uh, access and use a number of assistive technologies and appropriate resources um, in my lessons. And I've become more confident in using technology. And I'm now able to understand the many tools and resources we can, all, uh, we can use to facilitate students learning via Blackboard. And this will uh, thank you to this project that we did together with everybody else. If there are any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take any questions now if there are any questions. Okay, I would like to add something. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks to the successful integration of technology into this project, uh, the process could have been realized even if we were working at different institutions in different cities. So this takes me to the point where we should highlight the importance of using technology uh, even in self-reflection. Yeah, um, yeah. And again, fine. One more time, just I would like to say thank you for to to Haldun because uh, Haldun was very supportive throughout the course. And uh, you know, Haldun's got a you know a, a family. He's a you know he's got three children. I have two children. Friday has two children. Agu's got a child. So even for us, you know, it wasn't always easy to meet all the deadlines. Okay, but Haldun was always, always very patient and supportive throughout. So Haldun, thanks again for everything you did for us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very thanks much, Haldun and Iron and, and, and thank you. Thank you very Sorry, much. Friday. And thank you, Iron okay. again. Thank you, Friday. For all the stakeholders of the project and for for all our instructors listening to us at night. Right. And thank you to everybody for finding the time to listen to us, to our presentation. I hope it has been helpful and we can pick out it, uh, one or two things from this uh, project that we did. Right.